Coming at you from the frozen tundra that is East Central Alberta, Canada. Streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, Float, Odyssey, Telegram, Twitch, and sometimes the Prepper Broadcast Network. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. I am Toolman Tim, and today is September 4th, 2022, and this is episode 165 of the workshop podcast. We've been doing this 165 times so far. In a couple of minutes, I've got my live guest waiting in the green room. <laughs> it's Ken Ash from the Constructive Liberty Podcast. He'll be on in just a couple of minutes. We'll get through the uh, housekeeping segments right quick, and then we'll bring him on. So number one, if you guys want to meet up in person, Self-Reliance Festival and Prepper Camp are less than a month away. There's still tickets available for both, so check out their websites. I'll be there speaking at both, but honestly, it would just be great to shake hands, sit around the campfire, have a bourbon, but just come by and say hello. So if you want to meet up, those are the places to go. Now, a really cool announcement. I can't let the cat completely out of the bag yet, but we have picked up our official first financial sponsor of the podcast. I won't say who it is yet, but there's going to be one 30-second, one 30-second spot once a week in an episode. Some of it will be read by me. Some of it will be read by them. I won't give it away yet, but I am rather excited. That's the next step in the right direction. Okay, and finally, Patch of the Month Club, the cutoff. If you want to be in on the very first shipping with the very first month's design is September 6th. So you got two more days to sign up. Go to patchofthemonth.co, that's C-O, and you will get a monthly patch, $10 a month, $100 a year, and you will get the tactical patch that I send out to you. It might be politically incorrect. It might be hilarious. It might be slightly offensive. I hope not, but it will be there. So if you're interested in getting a Velcro morale patch every single month sent to your doorstep, go by and sign up. And finally, today's tool, if you guys follow me on social, you will know that I managed to move my storage container about four feet to the west using just manual hand tools. And the biggest help for me was the Nico five-ton cable come along. That thing is a beast. It's on sale on Amazon right now. The link will be in the description below. If you end up picking it up or anything through these links, that's what helps to support me through the affiliate sales. So thank you guys. And that's it. So without further ado, let's bring on our guest. Mr. Ken, how are you? Hey, Tim, doing good. How about you? Not bad at all. It's nice to have another fellow fire starter on here. Yes, sir. Hey, got to ask you. Um, yes, sir. Frozen tundras of Canada. Surely it's not frozen yet. It's only August. No, it's September. I'm way I, behind. I'm going to guess if you dug down far enough. All I can tell you is our frost line is over 10 feet here. Oh. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think maybe it might not be frozen down there for about three weeks and then it starts <laughs> freezing again. But, uh, yeah, oh. so... Let, all I can tell you is I have seven weeks until my snow contract starts. So Ooh. let's put it that way. Yeah. I'm, no, you can have, you can have all that. <laughs> that is why we are looking for land in Tennessee. So hey, that's where it's we at. can spend some winter down there, you know? There you go. Yes, sir. So how you been, bud? I've been good. Uh, working, trying to finish up some projects. I got behind on, well, you know, I'm a fellow handyman too. And I'd, Took on some bigger projects and uh, got behind a little bit. So I've got people screeching at me and I'm trying to work overtime to uh, to catch up and, and keep all the different people happy. So you, you know how that goes sometimes. A little challenging. I do. Um, what's the big pro what's the biggest project you took on this summer that stretched you a bit? Uh, let's see. Well, I had someone local here that's redoing an old farmhouse built back in the probably originally in the mid 1800s something nice. like that probably been revised a couple of times and uh she hired the cheap guy to come in and do a bunch of work for her and uh things didn't work out as as they tend to do when you go with the cheap guy um so coming in behind trying to fix all of those things finish up the vinyl siding on the outside take care of some roofing issues add some windows, redo some framing on the inside, finish out the floor, tile, sheetrock, paint, you know, the whole nine yards. So it's, it's been a project. How is that? I can't say very often I've had to go in and fix somebody else's mess. How's that been? Is it, 
is it freeing? Is it stressful? What, what do you, how do you find it? Well, it kind of depends. Like in this project, I could only see a portion of what I was going to have to do. So initially, you know, I could see that I was definitely going to have to fix a few issues. But as you start tearing into it, it's like you just want to pull your hair out at the stupidity of what the guy did. I know you'd have, you'd struggle with that maybe, but <laughs> I just started on my beard or my ear hair or something. There you go. So how so, did you? Yeah, I mean, it, it def definitely depends on what you get into. The, the more I dug into this one, the 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 worse it seemed to get. So it's, I don't know. <laughs> you just try so to try to cover some of it up if it's not structural. Structural. No, I I bid a certain aspect of it, gave her a price on that, and then extras you know obviously goes over the top of that that's tough eh extras people hate extras <laughs> well she's been good with that she's she's been pretty gracious um been getting a little frustrated that i've fallen behind on some things but when you when you work with subcontractors and then oh. you know the sheetrock guy has a stroke so you can't get a hold of him for a couple of weeks and have to find another guy it makes it challenging and the homeowner doesn't always understand that aspect of it but you know, you do your best to smooth the situation out. Did you say a stroke? He did have a stroke. So, That's yeah. That's not good. No. <laughs> I, oh I've God. been trying to get a hold of him for like two weeks at this point. He was supposed to get started in there, called, texted, and couldn't, couldn't get a hold of him. Finally, I'm not sure how. I ended up getting the number for his son, and he let me know. He's like, hey, dad had a stroke. We're way behind on work. I'll give you a number for one of my buddies who does sheetrock too. So I called him and he's like, yeah, I'll get there in two weeks to take care of it. So by then the house is sitting there for a month and she's calling me all the time. Like what's going on? I don't see anybody at the house. Cause she's living right across the field over there in her dad's farmhouse. Oh, <sighs> pull your hair out. <laughs> like, I've been there, my it's, friend. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. You can only make so many excuses, but it's, it's good. So Norm, this is your first time in the hot seat at the, in the workshop. We, you and I have it talked, is. it seems like a thousand times, even met in real life at LFTN. Oh, yeah. So, so fill us in. I'm sure most of us know who Ken Esch is because there's a lot of overlap, but one of my favorite questions to ask is what was your first job in high school? I always love to start there. Ooh, first job in well, first high period. school. Eh, first whatever, job, first period. Job. Okay. Okay. We can go, we can go way back. I was about like five or six years old. And I'd go to work with dad in the summers between school years. And I got paid $5 a day to keep the job site clean. He, he was a framing contractor. So he built houses. So I got paid five bucks a day, um, kept the job sites clean, hauled lumber around, hauled nails for the guys, kept them in water and um, ate lots of granola bars. It was pretty much my job. <laughs> uh, so that's was, how you... So I, we're going to talk about purpose and passion a little in a little bit, but I like I always love to pick at people's backgrounds a little. So is that I think I heard you mention before, but is that how you kind of get your love for handyman and carpentry and that kind of stuff? Or where did that all yes. start? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's definitely how I got into that field. It it fit me pretty well. Just I guess because I spent so much time in it with dad, I got skilled at it. I got fairly decent at it. And you know, anytime you get good at something, you tend to enjoy it a little more. And as growing up in it, I got good at it, spent time with dad working in it. And it, it, it fit me pretty well. I, I just, I don't know. I stuck with it. I've, I've kind of bounced around a few different um, jobs with, but all, all within construction, one aspect or another. But how yeah, that's you, definitely where it started. How long you've been self-employed? Uh, first time I was 17, I think, started a trim carpentry business. And then that crashed in 2008, along with almost everybody else <laughs> back in back in the economic crisis, the housing crash and all of that. So that was maybe four or five years. I was solo trim carpenter. Um, and then dad and I started a construction business probably 12 years ago, I think. And then we worked together for a couple of years, ended up moving out of state. And I started again on my own and been doing that for about five years now. Yes, sir. And you enjoy yeah. it most days? Most days. There's, there's always the days where you get into things you don't enjoy, but as long as you stay in the, 
I don't know, not even the 80 to 20 rule, as long as you can find some aspect of, of, you know, doing something you enjoy within the, the broader, uh, the broader scope of the work, then I think you're good. So is that, have you found your passion and your purpose in there? Or what do you think? <laughs> See, I'm going to start right off. Uh, yeah. I mean, throwing out the hard questions, you know, I've, I've been thinking about that a lot lately and I actually talked that about, about it in a video I did the other day. I've almost fallen out of love with some of the aspects of construction that I'm, mm -hmm. that I'm working in. You know, I enjoy most of what I do, but there's a lot of other things that I want to get into. And it just seems like the construction thing is still paying the bills. And so I still have to, you know, it's a cruel mistress because you still got to take care of it because you know, it's paying the bills. But this over here is what I'm wanting to focus on. So it's trying to find that balance and move forward in that. I, I don't know. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. So what is this over here that you want to focus on then? Well, so I'm going to go back again about yeah. 12 years, 13 years uh, soon after my wife and I got married, uh, we moved to South Georgia. I moved her from Virginia down there. And in our in the church that we were going to, we started up doing summer vacation Bible school. And that after about a year or two morphed into a weekly, what we call it Tuesday church. We go out and pick up kids in the projects. We had a school bus and we would way over capacity fill that school bus with kids of all ages and bring them out to the church and play games with them you know, read, tell them Bible stories, just spend time with them, building relationships with them. And um, a couple of years go by, that was going pretty well. And I, I got a little bit slow in my construction business at the time. And so I'm sitting there typing into Google, like, how can I make money online? <laughs> and this thing called coaching popped up. And I'm basically, it's, you know, helping people, I don't know. Most of you have heard of life coaches. It's, it seemed to have exploded in the last couple of years, but my mind got to working into how I can use that to help these kids that we've been mentoring over the past few years, you know, create a life that they actually enjoy doing, find a career that fits their skills and their passions and, you know, their, their personalities. And that's the thing that I want to focus on. So it's kind of a long story, but that's, that was what I would like to focus on. I don't think I can spend enough time in that to do it justice right now. So I'm working towards that. How are you going to make money at that? I'm just throwing it out. I'm just curious, like what, what, what's your plan <laughs> to make money with that? Or do you want to make enough with your construction so that you can do that as well? Well, I definitely, I don't think I want to be full-time in either one. Mm -hmm. And I, I've worked with a few coaches or people who have helped me, um, I guess giving me some ideas and inspiration. They also work with teens and parents and the, the career coaching aspect. And, and there are a lot of people who, I mean, they make pretty good money coaching teens, whether you do that in a one-on-one -on -one model or a group model or going and speaking in schools, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. I haven't figured out what my, what the model of my business is yet. And that's part of the problem. That's but, okay. Um, you know, focusing on, um, creating the content, trying to put the impact out there, you know, I guess building the foundation of that is, is kind of what I'm working on, nice. working towards the eventual goal of being able to, you know, generate some income from that. When you talked about VBS, it reminded me of a long forgotten memory. Uh, I ran VBS at our church back when I was just getting ready to go to university, you know, Veggie Tales. You know? Oh yes. Yeah, of Don't course worry. you do. So that was at the, the height of it, right? So we had Veggie Town, and I was Mayor Tim, and I wore a suit nice. jacket and a a top hat made out of Bristol board. So I remember <laughs> those days. Oh, and that's then, awesome. Yeah, it's 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 fun to see what you can come up with, and uh, you know, make make it a fun experience for the kids. It's definitely some wild and crazy times, for sure. So how do you how does one find one's purpose or passion or it, okay hold, let, let me slide back just a hair here so yeah, yeah, yeah. do you find your passion in what you do so like do you do you do you become passionate about what you're doing or do you know what your passion is and then go out and do that well you know I, I think there's a huge misconception today and I've, I've been guilty of this too is people 
try to say, oh, you have to find your purpose in life. And they make this like a huge, long quest. And, you know, it's like an epic Lord of the Rings adventure of finding your purpose. And the moment where he drops the ring into the fire is when you find your purpose and the whole <laughs> world opens up, right? Yeah. But I, I think you would be better off, you know, forget the epic adventure. Just find things that you enjoy doing. Or, you know, even if you're stuck in a job that you don't like, there's bound to be aspects of it that you do enjoy that fit things that you're good at. So whether you're stuck in, you know, before you and I went live, we were talking about doing clerical work. You know, <laughs> if we're if we're doing the bookkeeping and you and I would both hate that doing that full time. But there's aspects of it that we could find joy in or find purpose in. You know, we're doing this work is enabling us to go out and create impact or, or help somebody else on their home or help them to have a better life whatever in whatever aspect that is. So you can find purpose and passion in the things you do, even if the job that you're in is not something that you would ideally see yourself in. So, okay, because that goes completely against what most of modern society talks about. So it sounds to me, I'm just not putting words in your mouth, but number one, it sounds to me like it, you need to change your mindset possibly. Yep. But so what you're saying is you can find purpose and some passion in maybe what you're doing, even if it's flipping burgers or digging ditches or collecting bottles on the side of the road. Well, there's, there's a book, which I have not read yet, but I love the title of it. Uh, and Sinek wrote it called Fi or start with why. Hmm. So whether you're flipping burgers or you're out digging ditches or whatever job you find yourself in. I hate running a shovel as much as the next guy, but why are you running the shovel or flipping the burgers? Like go deeper. There's an exercise that um, one of my coaches took me through. It's called the I don't, like seven layers deep or something. Ask yourself why you're doing this and, and always go deeper on the why, like, why am I flipping burgers? Okay, well, why that? Why that? Why that? Until you can't ask your, until you can't find the why anymore. Like you're the really why you're doing that. You know, maybe at the end of the day, I'm flipping burgers to put me through school so that I can impact other people through this career or whatever it is that I'm working towards. So if you keep that end goal or that why in mind, I haven't actually read the book. So that's, okay. that's what I got. That's kind of where I go with that. It's on my to, to read list. You can see I have a lot of books back here that I still haven't read yet. <laughs> but um, that that is, I don't remember the exact phrasing of your question, but that's where I go with that. Yeah, yeah. So finding, so if, if, if you're not necessarily loving what you're doing right at the moment, turn it into a stepping stone to get you to where you want to be. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, I mean, you can do that with anything like just, you know, with my handyman business, there's things that people call me to do that I do not want to do. <laughs> uh, when I started out, you know, I, I laid some brick and some block and that was the first time I'd ever done that. I'd helped. I've been a mud boy for quite a few years before. This is the first time I'd ever actually done that for myself. I didn't really enjoy it, but it was it was a stepping stone towards finding the work I wanted to do, towards building the decks. That's what I like to focus on. Decks is building decks. Yes, um, it, it's that's a lot of fun for me. You know, doing the design and then going start to finish on the project. But uh, what else? Like, I don't like doing sheetrock. I've done quite yeah. a bit of sheetrock. <laughs> exactly. So it's it's. It's why you're doing that. You know, I'm not going to do sheetrock because I love doing sheetrock. Some people do. Right. Yeah. I don't that's, understand I it. Do. I'm glad they exist, but <laughs> that's not for me. So you do some of those things to, to move you to the next place. Um, Jack Spearco, you know, he always talks about he, he started, what was he, packing boxes or something for like yeah, yeah. seven bucks an hour when he first started out or might have even been less than that. That wasn't what he wanted to do. But he was able to do that. And I really like that comment that just popped up. I'm going to, yep. which one? Uh, Chris, uh, Chris. Joy and purpose. There you go. Yeah. Do you yes, want to comment on that? Joy and purpose are not synonymous. Exactly. You can find joy in doing anything. 
but I think that's in finding your why. And that eventually leads to your purpose or that they, they kind of go hand in hand. I think a lot of, do you find that a lot of people just think they're just going to find the joy or they're just looking for the feeling of joy necessarily, but can you have one yeah. or the other? Yeah, go ahead. We talked about that on Fireside Freedom the other night. Like a lot of, a lot of people look for the feelings. Um, you've heard the term microwave society. Like everybody wants everything now. We live in a microwave society. Like people can't wait on doing the work. They want the feeling. They go for, they're, they're trying to find the next high, essentially. I'm not a drug user, so I don't know. I've, I'm just using that as, as an example. People only want the result of the work without actually putting in the work. But the, the paradox, I guess you would say, is that the true joy in it only comes after having actually done the work. Right. Right. Yeah. So getting the, the result of it without going through the work, you don't appreciate, you don't have that joy. And I think that's a lot of times why we move from one thing to the next thing, to the next and to the next and on and on, always trying to find, call it joy, call it happiness, peace, whatever it is. You know, we never settle down long enough to actually do the work to get the result that we want. I'm going to bring this up. I want to read it and then I'll get you to comment on it as we go along. But Hunter says, Hunter's over on Twitch, which is great that people are over there. Mm. said, I think Churchill said something about, he asked two guys digging a trench, what they were doing. One said, I'm digging a ditch. The other one said, I'm building a cathedral. Mm, yes, I like that. That's that's definitely going deeper on the why. Like if you're, if you're only digging a ditch, I mean, you can dig a ditch anywhere, but why are you digging a ditch? Where are you going to dig it? And what's the end result going to be? Something you can be proud of. I remember my, there was an old guy lived across the street from me when I was a kid. His name was Cliffy. And so dad used to go and help him. They, they had, do you ever hear of the term of slot bucket? It was like a, you'd take mm. a night pail upstairs with you and, you know. Oh, so, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So they would bring that down and he would dig a hole in his backyard to dump it in. And it was just a hole in the ground, but he would make sure that dad dug it perfectly square. It had to be per because that was what, that was the, that was the requirement for him. He wanted it to be nice, even though it was literally a slot bucket being dumped in it. He wanted to see pride in the job and he wanted to see a nice finished product. And I thought mm. that is crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, taking pride in what you do. Most people would say, well, it's just a, a slop hole or, or you know, it, it's only a ditch or it's only a whatever. But you're not doing that for yourself. You're doing it for somebody else. You're trying, to, you're making an impact on other people. You know, it's there's a there's a bigger purpose to why you do what you do. So what about go back a little bit you, you, your eyes light up when you talk about building decks so how come you like deck building decks so much where does where does that give you purpose and how does that give you joy <laughs> i don't know um i'm not sure why i settled on that i think it's because it's it's an easier thing to do you know it's a it's a quick turnaround you know a lot of the a lot of the things that you get into are a lot of work and you don't have a lot of visual progress like yeah. you, you can work laying tile. You know, I'm on this tile job. I've been in the bathroom laying tile shower and a tile floor and then did a backsplash in the kitchen. I've probably worked on it five different days, maybe even more than that from laying it to or preparation and then actually setting the tile and then grout and all of that. And it is like, you don't really see a whole lot of progress with a deck. You can come in there and in one or two days, you've got this massive transformation on the house that looks awesome. And it's, I, I think that's part of it. The, you know, you get that quick dopamine hit, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. I was just saying, don't do it for that. <laughs> well, but you got to do, you know, you need, you need some purpose. I, yeah. I, I love decks too, because like you said, and every time you build one, everybody's like, how did you build it so fast? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, yeah, I don't know. It's very, it's very satisfying. I, I heard them say once that the most satisfying job you can have is in demolition. Somebody that runs heavy equipment, demolishing something mm -hmm. because you literally see the fruits of your labor immediately. You know, yeah. that one bucket knocks down a bucket of the building, you know, and I always thought that was neat. 
So do I you, think it would be fun to run a crane with a big wrecking ball. That, oh, that'd be the ultimate job, right? Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> oh, you mad? The oh, destruction. Man. Oh man. Do you think? Do you think everybody has a purpose in life? Because I hear that a lot, and I'm. This is not shit on Gen Z night. I promise you, because I hear it <laughs> probably more from. You know, I had somebody message me the other day who said they were in their 40s and they still didn't want didn't know what they wanted to be when they grew up. So do you think everybody has a purpose? Well, I, I was what I want to say is, well, of course, Tim, we walk out of the womb and there's a set path for us in life. And if you don't follow that exact path, then you're a failure in life. But the truth is, if you find purpose in what you do, um, like we've all, we've all got interests, we've all got skills, we've all got innate abilities, and we've got a, a unique personality, which is another thing I love talking about. And I'm going to be talking about that at Self Reliance Festival. So that's oh, be a lot I of forgot fun. to plug that. Yeah, 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 plug yeah. yeah. You. You're going to be there too. Plug it quick. Yeah, get it out of the way there, so we know. I'm going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So if where was I going with that? Purpose. Um, if Everybody if have you a purpose. do things that you enjoy doing, yes. If you do things that you enjoy doing things that you're good at. And here, I don't know if you can see this. It's a little blurry. You got your interests? Okay. A little blurry? Yeah. You got your right. interests. It's a Venn diagram with interests, skills, and the things that you can impact oh. other people with. There we go. And it, yep. Yeah. So taking the things that you're interested in and the things that you're good at and finding ways to help other people, that's, that's purpose, like working within that. Because there's, there's going to be things that I'm interested in that I can't help anybody with. There's going to be things I'm good at that I'm maybe not very interested in, but I still can't help anybody with it. There's things that I can help people with that I have no interest in and I'm not good at. Sheet rock. <laughs> Go back to that one. I hope Brian's not listening tonight. Brian Alexovich. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's having a stroke right now. Sorry. But yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> uh, take a shot every time we... We mentioned that word, <laughs> but if you, if you operate in the, in the center there, you know, the things that you're interested in, the things that you're good at and the things that make a difference in the lives of other people, I think we find a lot of purpose in that. And, and it's a lot easier than seeking this long journey, this, that Lord of the Rings type trek to find this purpose. It's, it's way too difficult when you go through all of that. Do you remember in, I don't know if you remember this, but it seemed for me in 11th grade or uh, grade 11, everybody needed to know what I was doing. Didn't matter who I was. So wh where are you heading? What, wh what is your plans? What are you going to do? And it's almost like they expected you to know what you were going to do, how much money you were going to make and what you, and what your job was going to be for the rest of your life. Is that, mm -hmm. Do you find that when you're working with the teens and you know, that is that, is there over expectations there sometimes? I, I think so. I mean, that's a good, it's a really good question. Like with all guidance counselors and everything they put you through in school, they don't allow teens to explore what they're interested in. I, I wish they would bring back the shop class and the mechanics mm. and, and all of that things and actually allow them to, to just go explore things they're interested in. Go, go do something find out what you're good at. You know, I would say go a couple days a week. They, you know, they could drop out of school. I, I just told my wife the other day, probably 80% of what I learned in school is useless. Oh, 100%. I, I don't remember it. And I obviously didn't use it in life. Most of what I do in life, I've learned on my own outside of school. So if we, but I mean, I guess, being in the liberty community, we know why we can't allow that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get too many free-thinking individuals. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Pip and I says, you're 11. You should have your financial path ready. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> it, yeah, it seems yeah, like that, a... that is the, That's what they try to push on teens, for sure, is you should know what you want to do. You need to sign up for these classes going to college right away. Sign your life away to a debt that you'll never be able to get rid of, you know, except for the, the, the little pittance that the U S government just threw to some college graduates recently, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. A little forgiveness there, but there's too much pressure. I think put on teens, put on the youth today to know every step in life. 
And I'm all about knowing where I'm going and what I'm doing. I like having a plan. I hate going mm -hmm. into something without knowing what the expected outcome is. But life isn't that way. You can know where you want to go with it, but you got to start exploring because your path to get there is going to change. Do you find sometimes people are scared because they think they're going to make the wrong decision? Kind of analysis paralysis, you know? Yeah, I, I do see that. And I, I probably would tend to find myself in that too. And, you know, on a smaller scale, <laughs> tell a funny little story here. A couple of years ago, um, we got a, it's like a 12 foot by three foot deep little pond, kind of a, uh, I, get, I don't know if it's a stock tank, you call it or something, but my wife wanted to put it in the, in her garden to have a little water feature out there. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Let's go do this. So we, I got the backhoe out there and I took one scoop and I'm like, you know what? We're wanting Nick Ferguson to come out and help us design the property. I don't know if this is going to be the right spot for it. And so I undid the scoop, put the dirt back in the hole, and we still haven't messed with it. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where just go try something. Just go do something. If we had put in the pond there, it would catch rainwater. We'd have more, definitely more mosquitoes, but hopefully frogs. Some, you know, it'd be a little water feature that would have brought my wife joy in her life. But instead, I let the, let the big picture you know, scare me too much. And I, I didn't make any decision except to not move forward. So <laughs> I'm a big fan. I hate to say this and I, I shouldn't almost shouldn't say this out loud, but I'm a big fan of knowing where I'm going to start a project and not knowing where I'm going to end it or how mm. even to end it. So I, I tend to work myself not into a corner, but I start a project and then learn the next step along the way. And sometimes that helps. Sometimes I get myself in a mess, but it usually, for me, it seems to help. Yeah, you can you can BS your way out of it if nothing else. <laughs> or or I message Ken and I'm like, hey Ken, I'm uh, copying your uh, your Taj Mahaler, and um, yeah, yeah. How did you do that? And you know, but it has it pays to have good friends, right? There you go. Yep. So Hunter says, I asked my kids, how do you want to? I ask my kids, sorry, how do you want to live? not what they want to do when they grow up. I'm not sure it's stuck in their brains yet. <laughs> I love that. That is awesome. How do you want to live is a very good question. I, th I think we put too much emphasis on, on what you are or who you are and what you do rather than how, you, how do you enjoy living life? Um, I asked the question the other day, what do you do? I, I think I posted this on Facebook. I said, what do you do? They just, just threw it out there, left it kind of open-ended, and people came back with um, carpenter, um, baker, all of those things. And, and my next post was, that is not actually what you do. Think of the people that you impact and how their lives are better, what you do for them, how it changes their life. That is what you really do. Like that's, that's going deeper on that why. I don't know if that made sense. Sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah, it it seems like the purpose needs to impact others. If you really want to go deep and feel that, or I hate to say feel it, but find that purpose. Hey. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've, I've I like to study people who seem like they've got it all together or have achieved a lot in life. You know, think people that most of us would look up to and say, boy, they've got it all together. The super wealthy and, and all of that. And it seems like across the board, you know, all of their wealth, all of their everything could go away. But the people that it's, it's the relationships that they built is the people whose lives they've changed is, is what they remember that that is what is truly most important to them in life. Not all the money, which the money helps. I think that comes from impacting enough people. I think it was Zig Ziglar said, you can have anything you want in life. If you just help enough other people get what they want first. So right. it's finding it's, it's helping those people get what they want, but doing things that you enjoy doing within that. I think that that's what makes an, a, an enjoyable life. What did this will be the second time we mentioned Jack tonight, but what does he say? Um, <laughs> You can have anything you want, just not everything you want. Right. Yeah, that that's true. That's very true. 
I'm just going to comment on this too. Hunter says, why hate to say feel? That is exactly correct. I help people and it makes me feel good. Yeah, absolutely. And I do too. I, I think why I corrected myself was because I don't want to focus on the feeling. I focus on the doing and I find the feeling afterwards. Just to mm -hmm. clarify, that's why. And maybe I overcorrect, but it, it is what it is for sure. That wouldn't be know? a Canadian thing, would it? Oh, pr probably because we apologize. <laughs> we hate to get, we don't even like Sorry. to get too, you know, we get a little too jovial and we're like, oh man, no, something's wrong here. We, you know, we better call the queen and see if we can have permission to, to be happy, right? So, yeah, this much fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We showed her to uh, apartment prepper. Uh, she's starting a movie club for preppers here right away. So that's kind of cool. Oh, cool. Awesome. So awesome. is there a set path for everyone? Like, is there a set? I'm going to take this step and this step. And if I go the wrong one, if I pick the wrong fork in the road, I'm hooped. Or is the path you're on where you need to be? Mm -hmm. What happens when you put a destination into your GPS? If I did it right, it'll get me where I need to go and might give me two or three ways to get there. Yeah. So that's, I like to liken life to a, a journey. I mean, it is a journey, obviously, but if you know the kind of life you want to live, you kind of can figure out what you're going to have to do to get there, to achieve that. You can look at other people that have the things you want, that are living the life you want, that, you know, maybe have the lifestyle you want or, or whatever that is. You can find other people that have, that have been there, done that, and you can map out what you want, how to get there. Okay. Sure. You're going to run into obstacles. You're going to come up on things. You don't know how to get around. You're going to hit a mountain. You're going to hit valleys and have to take detours. But that's the beauty of life is the unexpected, right? Like if you knew what everything that was coming in life, then, you know, it wouldn't be that much fun. It's like with watching a movie, you know, uh, apartment preppers starting a movie club. If you if you watch a movie, the second time you watch, it's not nearly as much fun because you know everything that's going to happen. Right, right. And same way with life. Like you you live life, you know what you're aiming for, but you don't know exactly how it's going to look in the end, and you don't know exactly all the things that are going to happen on the way there. But you can you know what you got to do to work towards that. When you started your business, I, this is how I feel about mine, but when you started your business, did you know, <laughs> where did you think you were going to be and are you there now? And did you take the exact route you thought you were going to need to get there? <laughs> uh, I, I started my business because I, I knew how to do it and I didn't want to work for anybody else because I can, I can make, I like the freedom of working by myself and I make a little more money. So no, I, I didn't have... And an idea of where I wanted to be with it. I think I just started it because somebody needed a deck built and I'm like, Hey, I know how to build decks. I'm, I'm all in <laughs> and just kind of went from there. Um, at this point, I've kind of got an idea of where I want to go. Um, still working on that. It, that's changed and morphed over the years. And that, that's another beautiful thing about life is you can change the destination. You can change the destination. You know, if you see, you know what, I don't like where this is going. I don't think I want to do that after all. You can set a new destination. All it takes is putting a different address in the GPS. Love that. So it's okay to change my mind? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love it. So you mentioned Zig Ziglar and you said you study some of the other uh, successful or, you know, passionate, purpose-driven type people. Who are some of the other ones What or or less, and lessons you've learned from them? I love hearing this kind of stuff. Oh, man. No, I, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> See, Ken, I, Ken's really mad at me right now because I've barely asked him anything we were supposed to talk about. It's going really well. <laughs> no, so. this is great. This is, this is a lot better than, than what I threw at you. Um, See, when you go to put me on the spot like that to pull something specific out, like everything goes. Um, one of the, I think one of the books I read recently that I really enjoyed was, uh, Napoleon Hill's think and grow rich. And he talked a lot about thinking about how you want your life and, and doing the things that it takes to, to get you there. I mean, a lot of what we're talking about now, um, seven habits of highly successful people, which I think we kind of went over some of that in one of the fireside freedom episodes yeah. talking about the habits that create the success you want in life. 
my favorite part of that is the sharpen the saw one, which is his seventh habit. And that is the continual learning and growing that, that you have to go through in becoming who you want to be. What about, uh, we never mentioned this or even talked about this, but what about you, you talk about, you want to be a life coach and you talk about some of the coaches that you've interacted with. How important is that to someone to have both a mentor and someone they're going to mentor? You know, whether it's paid or free or however you work it out, I think you can figure out anything you want to do for free with all of the information that's out there. But a, a coach or a mentor is basically somebody who can shrink time for you. Huh. So you know where you want to go, right? You know, this is the result I want. And I can work over the next couple of years to build that. But if I can work with somebody who knows how to do it and all the steps I need to take, and they can tell me what the next step is, I'm shrinking time and I get there a lot quicker. I'm sure, it costs you money in the now or or however you can, I mean, it might cost you money or it might cost you, you know, Nicole and I have worked back and forth some, I did some work for her, for her coaching services. Hmm. Nicole sauce from living free in Tennessee, for those who don't know. So however you can work that out. You know, I've heard of people who wanted to work with somebody. And so they called them up and said, Hey, how can I serve you? What can I do for your community? Just so that they could be around them and observe them and work, work with them because they couldn't afford it. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different ways to work with people. One of my, one of the favorite things that I've heard somebody do recently is, was some of these old, like this guy here is in his sixties, I think at this point, he's a career coach, but some of the people that he wanted to work with that he'd never, he said he'd never be able to afford to hire them to help him. He would call them up and say, Hey, I know you've got this conference coming up. Can I, can I work the tables for you? Or can I, whatever he could yeah. do for them at their conference. So he'd go be there, meet the people providing value to them and eventually becoming friends with them and growing himself that way. Apartment prepper said uh, Zig Ziglar held her door, held the door open for her once when she lived in nice North Texas. Nice man. Yeah. Yep. From all I've heard, he, he really was a uh, head definitely had a lot of good things to say. Uh, one of my mentors who's actually a cousin of mine as well is in the i think he's what do they call it as a ziggler he he says he was handpicked by the ziggler family to carry on zig's legacy so Neat. that's pretty cool yeah yeah so how does i know you touched on a little bit but how do you i mean mentor mentee relationship seems so formal and it's like hey you want to mentor me but how, <laughs> and any suggestions or tips for finding someone well, okay i'm going to back up a little here but you know how they say what is it? The five, maybe you've talked about this, either the three or the five people you surround yourself around are going to be the people you become like. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you even get one of them? Well, the easiest way is listen to podcasts. You know, that, that is a very, um, a low impact way to, to have, I'm, I'm not sure how to say that. that. That's an easy way to, to get close to somebody, to, have that mentor mentee relationship. You know, you don't have the the personal touch there, but you have 75, 80% of it because you can have all the personal growth information or, or, you know, business building or, or whatever it is you're trying to learn how to manage your personal finances. There's hundreds of podcasts out there about that. So it, whatever it is you're trying to learn, that's the easiest way to, to find a mentor is, is to go listen to their podcast, start interacting with them. You know, people that want to start a handyman business, they probably found you with your, with the YouTube series, how to start a handyman business. I, hmm. I don't remember exactly what you called that. Um, that was one of the outside of the uh, Jack Spierko's expert council. That was kind of the first place I heard or knew anything about you was that little series that you did. So somebody could maybe came into your world there like, Hey, I like this guy. He's giving me a lot of good information. Maybe join one of your communities eventually mm. maybe came to meet you or met you at a conference somewhere. That's, 
you can build your way up to that meeting in person, becoming mentor, mentee, or even friends, you know, just like you said, you called me up and said, Hey, how can I, how, how did you build that Taj Mahal? Or? I, right. I, Man, I don't, we keep talking about Jack, but I mean, we're both here, honestly. <laughs> I rarely, I mean, I talk about him, but never this much. But I right? just think, think about the Survival Podcast family tree and how many things have happened because so-and-so got mentored audibly from Jack without Jack ever knowing them and them right? doing great things. Someone else did great things. And it all led down to me starting a podcast, you starting a podcast, us meeting in Living Free in Tennessee, and me being able to text you and say, hey, Ken. How do I put those two by twelves up there and attach them properly and make sure it doesn't fall over in the winter? Yep. With if it hadn't been for Jack Spirico's podcast, we, we're going to have to quit mentioning his name. Right. <laughs> no, right? It's, this is just a big ad for the Survival Podcast. <laughs> if it hadn't been for him, I never would have met Nicole. I never would have, you know, even though she only lives an hour and a half away from me, I never would have met her. I never would have built that relationship. It's becoming a friendship. I never would have met you because you came down to her workshop. No, it's, I don't think if you do what you love and in, like try to impact other people doing what you love, you'll never know the true extent of the impact you have on the world. Right. Amen to that brother. It's true. And if, if you do, you probably didn't have much impact. Right. Or you, you might be vastly overestimating your impact. How about that? Right. <laughs> I want to yep. bring this up here. Uh, yeah. Joe, I'm sorry, Joe, I can never pronounce your last name and I need to apologize. So I'm not even going to try. But he said, I'm trying to get into the state. I'm trying to get into stage pyro. And I think I have managed to get probably the number one fire performer in the world to let me help him out. Nice. That's awesome. That is a great way to get started in that. Billy Bond. Did you listen to Billy when he was on with Nicole and John the other day? I Three think hour I long that. episode. I wish it was seven. He talked about, oh my God, why can't, um, the permaculture guy. Um, Jeff, no, not Jeff Lawton, before no. Jeff. Anyway. I'm, maybe I didn't catch that episode. Okay, so he wanted to meet him. So he walked up and said, can I carry your luggage for you? Like, so... <laughs> Can, can I carry your luggage? I mean, in some ways, there's nothing more demeaning in a sense. And I don't mean that in a bad way. But put yourself lower to help someone to get yourself into their sphere of influence, hey? Yeah, exactly. Just do what you can to any anything to, to be able to learn from them, to open their doors. Because we've all, I think any time somebody comes up to us, if they're asking for something, you know, it, it kind of puts mm. up a barrier. And so if you can, whatever you can do to get them to lower that barrier or even open the door a little bit to have access to them, you know, the carrying his luggage, that was a way that he could walk beside him and talk with him for a little bit. And that, that opened the door to that relationship. Have you ever had a conversation with Sue Zoldak? I uh, chatted with her a little bit at that LFTM. She, during her presentation, and this is turning more into a conversation than an interview, and I apologize, but I just thought of this. This is and, great. Uh, I love it. <laughs> so Sue talked about how she wanted to get into political ads. And there was a certain political ad, I don't remember which one it was, that she loved. So she looked up who created the ad. She contacted the guy and said, I want to intern for you. And basically, he'd never taken interns before, but because of her, she, he took an intern on. Now, she returns that all the time. We talked, just a throwaway comment. She said to me one at LFTN, if you ever need help with anything, give me a call. So I ran for town council here in town. I lost miserably, and that's totally <laughs> fine. But I messaged her, and within 10 minutes, she's like, okay, I'll send this along. She had me a Google ad campaign set up and running wow. for me. Like, wow, that's amazing. We only met for maybe 20 minutes at LFTN. And I almost felt embarrassed to ask her, but I, I've, I now live by the adage that if somebody offers, they mean it because mm -hmm. I used to always be so shy and be like, no, nah, it's okay. They don't really mean it, you know, but how else do you, you gotta let, you gotta bless somebody by allowing them to help you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, making the ask is probably the hardest thing to do in life. <laughs> 
Yep. Um, you know, you can, most people don't get what they want because they don't ask or because they ask, you know, they don't, they don't ask in the right way or for the right things. I you, had, just gotta, um, you just got to ask. I was on Liberty late night. They, they're big on float. They, they're really hilarious. I've had them on and they're coming back on and they had um, John McAfee before he was whatever, you know, happened to him. They had him on the show. I mean, that's a big get, right? And I asked him, I said, how the hell did you get him? He's like, well, we asked, <laughs> right? Awesome. Yeah. Hey, you know, you don't, I, what's the worst that can happen? They say no. Just ignore you. I don't know how many. Yeah. I, I Honestly, I, I find being able to interview some really cool people has been huge for me. And how else do you do it? I just reach out and ask. If, you know, I tell people, even if 10% of the people you ask say yes, you're way ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. We got a ton of comments here. I wanted to bring up a couple. Hunter said, uh, agreed, said, I found Jack Spierko, then Brian Chambers, Tim, and Kip. So it's all kind of, I'm not, I don't know who Kip is. Do you know Kip? If anybody else? No. no. Um, and then, uh, where else? I had another one here. Oh, and then uh, Hunter said, another good way is to wiggle into their comments in live streams. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Chris Find Dixon. them on Facebook, join their communities, their groups, comment. Yes. Live streams are awesome. And Chris Dixon, I mean, there's not a harder working dude out there. And he says, never, never be afraid to intern for someone and absorb everything. I like that. Uh, an apartment prepper said, uh, Jesus, uh, sorry, I mean, Jesus served others. If it was good enough for him, it's got to be good yep. enough for all of us, eh? Yep. Man, we got a, oh, we got a bunch of new people in here. <laughs> Comments are going crazy. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're gonna we're just going along and working our way through. Uh, Porterhouse and Teal said it's okay, guys. You keep mentioning Spearco. I learned of Toolman Tim from his expert council as well as LFTN and Unloose the Goose podcast and just about everyone else attached to this ecosystem or his yep. ecosystem. And, <laughs> it's and, it's a uh, it's like the family tree. You know, you've got the trunk and then all the branches go out. It's you got to start somewhere and you learn of the next person and move on and develop those relationships and it's, it's cool how it works do you ever watch the office the tv show the office i've watched a little bit of it i always had a hard time getting into it michael <laughs> you of have course. to appreciate the humor <laughs> oh as yeah, long as you like being uncomfortable it's funny but right M michael the, the boss had a poster on his wall and it said you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take wayne gretzky then under it it said michael scott so in other words he was quoting it was so stupid but it's it's cliche and true. Mm -hmm. if, if you never ask, the answer is always no. Yep. And apartment prepper said you always have a 50% chance of getting a yes. So what if you had somebody, if I came to you and I said, Hey, Ken, you know, I'm 45, I'm in a dead end job and I feel less fulfilled. I feel unfulfilled completely. Like there's just, I have no fulfillment in my life. What are you going to tell me? There's no hope for you, Tim. I'm sorry. I assume that's what you would say. <laughs> you're at the end of the rope. <laughs> you're, the, you're the world's worst life coach. Fair enough. Okay. No. <laughs> Tell it like it is. <laughs> no, I, I always go back to the Venn diagram um, that I showed earlier, which glares too much to show it. So find things that you enjoy doing. Find one little thing in the job that you're in that you enjoy. You know, if, if you are stuck behind a desk, and you almost never get to see people, but twice a week on say Tuesday at three o'clock and Friday at, at 10, the UPS guy comes in, <laughs> chat him up, like make that what you love about your job, make his day better and pick something out about what you do and make that what you love about your job. But and also always be looking to, to find something that fits not only your, what you like to do, what you're good at, but your personality. Cause I think that plays a lot into it. We don't have enough time to go all through no, that. We so do. You're gonna have, you're gonna, Unless you need to go to bed or your wife's hollering at you, you go right ahead and start talking about personality. <laughs> well, we don't have that much time, but <laughs> a couple of hours, I don't know. Um, no, no, you know, there's, there's people that love being around people. There's people that would rather not talk to anybody. There's people that would like to be in charge. There's people that just want to help. So if you can find your spot in that, find a job that, that fits that, you know, that goes a long way towards that purpose, that passion, towards 
loving the job that you have and then also go deeper on the why in in the work that you're doing you know i I worked when i first moved to kentucky i um the first job i got here before i had really met anybody i was working for a uh company that built and maintained chicken houses like the massive sixty thousand bird houses and I could not find anything that I loved about that job. So I didn't last there long. <laughs> it was I, the absolute worst job I ever had. Like I don't, I can't smell, but the ammonia in those houses was overpowering. It, it was, it was rough. So I, I know there's those times and I'm sure I could think of something that I enjoyed about it. I did make some good relationships in that job, made some good friends when I worked there. So there's, there's always things that you can find about it, whether it's the work or not. There's always things that you can find about what you do that you enjoy. Like that. So where, where did, um, so yeah, as far as, cause it's tough. I, I just keep going back to the idea that it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people that understand this, Ken. And it feels like what you're saying is the complete opposite of what I hear a lot. And I don't want to go down a negative rabbit hole, but it, do you feel like you're swimming upstream trying to teach this sometimes? I don't remember where I first heard this, but they said when, when everybody is going that way, when everybody's doing this thing, do the other thing, you know, um, they say that in, in investing too. If, if everybody is, is buying, you sell, if everybody's selling, that's when you need to buy. When everybody is focused on, on this thing, you know, the answer is probably somewhere else because I mean, you following the crowd usually doesn't get, get you what you want. Have you so found that to be true for yourself? Oh, a hundred percent. And then when you do do your own thing, then a lot of people are like, oh, must be nice. Or right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That <laughs> came easy to you. Well, no, but so the word easy or simple is finding your purpose, either simple or easy. Simple, but not easy. How come? Well, <laughs> it's, it's like we've been talking about all evening, finding it's doing things, finding something that you enjoy. You know, if you don't know what you want to do, say you've just had the same job, you've only ever had one job your whole life and you've hated it your whole life and you're just finally sick and tired of it. If you don't know what you want to do, then just start doing things. Start trying different things. You know, I mean, find, make that be your purpose. Make that be what you become passionate about is finding something that you can make money out of that, you're, that you like to do. You know, go down YouTube rabbit trails, go, go just take a whole Saturday. And instead of watching football or baseball or um, the Lord of the Rings movies, got to bring those back up again. (laughs) I I bring those up because my wife and I watch that series almost every winter. You know, we go through them and it's almost that time again. So I've been thinking about them, but take some time to explore things outside of what you're doing to find something you're interested in, like even interested in enough to go try or internet or take a weekend job doing, just try different stuff. I mean, it, what, what's the worst that can happen? You're going to find something else you find out you don't like. That's all. Exactly. What um, Thomas Edison, what he, he said, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I just found 10,000 ways that didn't work. You know, right. I, I, you fail your way to success, essentially. Like it's, it's all an experiment. You just have to adjust it a little bit, change course a little, adjust. You're, you're never, the path from here to there is never a straight line. Right. right? It reminds me of building a business. I, of course, I, I, when I tell people, I always say, I call it the spaghetti method, although it, it kind of breaks <laughs> down. If, if you, in, if, if you inspect that analogy too close, it will fall apart. But I always say, you know, throw a bunch of shit at the wall and see what sticks. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. I wish people had more freedom to do that. Or it's not that they don't have the freedom and maybe we need to give them permission, Ken. I don't know. But a lot of people feel like I can't try everything because I'm either going to run out of time or I'm going to try, I'm going to waste my time. But actually, don't you think we're kind of investing by trying a bunch of different things till you find the one that clicks with your soul? Yeah, I I think so. Um, 
you know, when you bring that up, I, I have to wonder what it was like before 150 years ago, before the industrial age. Because that was when people started having these 40, 50, 60 year careers in, you know, you end up with a gold watch at the end of it. <laughs> and we've been so brainwashed into, you have to go get this job and that's what you are for the next, you know, the rest of your life until you're too old and creaky and they send you off on the iceberg to die. <laughs> you don't have to have the same job for forever. You know, if, if you bounce around to a bunch of diff different jobs, sure, people are going to judge you. They're going to be like, that dude can't hold down a job to save his life. Don't worry. Don't listen to them. It's your life. Find what you love doing and make a difference in other people's lives doing that. I think I it's always, as simple as that. I always got bored if I was doing the same thing for too long. I Part of my passion and part of my reason for being is to find something new to do on occasion. <laughs> exactly. And that's part of the reason why I like doing decks because everyone is different and I'm not there long enough to get bored with it. It doesn't grow hair on it, does it? That's right? one of the exactly. best parts that I love. I always said I love that four to eight hour job. If I can go and get it done in one day, I'm that's perfect for me. Mm. And I don't know. And I've just been thinking about it as we're going. And I, there's never a time, well, I shouldn't say that, but if, if you want to find me my happiest, legit joyful when I'm working for, you know, doing my job, it's on the zero turn mower with the sun out and an audio book in my ears. And that I don't know why I find so much joy and so much purpose in that, but it is one of the, it's one of the things that just drives me. I just love it. And maybe blowing snow too, because I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll say. No, the um, the definitely riding the mower, which I grew up in the South, so you're pretty much blowing sand most of the time. I never liked to ride the lawnmower. <laughs> but getting out there, you know, you you can see what you're doing, and it goes pretty quick. And then I think you're a lot like me in that you love learning. You love listening to things that are going to help you improve or, or do something a little bit better or maybe shift your mindset a little bit. That's, that's super awesome. It is. And again, I do, I, I do like, I think that's where I get my variety is by listening to different audiobooks or picking something. I love getting good recommendations from people. Maybe I should ask you that. How about books? Anything you've read recently or, or what books have changed your life? How about that? Uh, I go back to, um, seven habits of highly effective people. That's one that I read. I've read it once and I said, I was going to make, put it on my yearly list. <laughs> and it's been a slog this year getting through my books. I'm, I'm right now in, um, I can't even think of the name of the book of it. That's how long it's been since I picked it up. So I'm probably on maybe my fifth book this year. I read a lot of hard books and I can sit down and read for about 15, 20 minutes. And then I got to put it away. I, the name of the book escapes me. I haven't picked it up for probably two weeks, but. Um, what about the role of entertainment in purpose? So whether that's like you said, Lord of the Rings or a fiction novel or going to a concert, that kind of stuff, you know? I, I think you have to make time for that. Um, I was just thinking to myself the other day, you know, I almost forget what it actually have fun. And so I was trying to like, think of how can i make life fun again so i was actually trying to buy that domain too, make life fun again oh. somebody already came up with it but or, or bought it <laughs> but you definitely have to have time for fun in life or i mean even even doing things that you enjoy doing you know i i can love building decks but i don't want to do that 24 7 mm. i want to have some me time and finding finding the the things that recharge you goes a long way towards helping you, you know, keep going in life because, you know, life's pretty tough sometimes. So when you talk about helping others, because that is, I mean, that's one of the reasons I live too, is to just to impart knowledge to other people and to inspire them. But how important is, re you, you mentioned that word recharging. How important is that? I think it's huge. I think it's real huge. And knowing how you recharge too, um, like for myself, I'm more of an introvert. So what most people think introverts don't like people. I like people. I just have to recharge my batteries alone. You know, I, I enjoy interacting and talking with people, but only if I have a full battery. 
Hmm. If I go to an event and I'm tired and haven't had any me time, I'm probably not going to talk to many people. People are probably going to think I'm standoffish and just not a whole lot of fun to be around. But if, if I've had that time to, to recharge by myself, you know, fully rested and all of that, then I can go, I can be a lot of fun. Then you have the other people that actually their batteries get full <laughs> off of being around other people. Is that you? No, I, I no? know. The reason I laugh is because everybody thinks it is. And I would say <laughs> I'm probably closer to an extrovert than some, but I definitely still can recharge in alone time books. I, you know, I'm just as happy with an audio book for eight hours. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I could go sometimes like when I get a full apartment reno and I could go for hours, just, you know, 10, well, I'm going to drive to North Carolina. So I'm going to mm -hmm. have three full days to be all by myself. Wow. And I, I love that. Right. So I, I can be both. I, I'm definitely, you know, I can get charged up with people too, but I still, I still dig that. There's there, somewhere in between for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned audiobooks. I don't listen to a lot of audiobooks. I'm trying to get more into that. The one I've listened to most recently, it's a fairly new one. I think it's called a hundred million dollar offers um, by Alex Hormozy. Okay. He, um, have you heard of acquisition.com? Basically what he does is help. He started out helping, I think fitness gyms or like uh, gyms where you go to work out, helping them build their clientele and, and kind of a lot of them that were falling apart. They'd call him and he'd come help them to bring their gym back to life. So through that, he started helping businesses build up and he started acquisition.com to create a bunch of free courses and all of that. And what they'll do is then, his, his goal is to put out free content to help businesses build up to a point where he'll then invest in them. And that's, that's where he makes his money. So this book was written by him, hundred million dollars or hundred million dollar offers. I think it was, it's pretty good. It's kind of a little bit of a sales machine, I think, but he had a lot of good information in it. If you can get through it, it's only maybe a four hour listen. So okay. you should check it out. I like that. Yeah. And, uh, any other ones that you've uh, been listening to? I know you said you only hit about five this year, but how about yeah. looking back into your past? What other books have you have really twisted your brain up in a good way? That's a good question. I <laughs> I I can't remember what all I read last year. Honestly, it's I'll throw one out to start, and <laughs> yeah, uh, but it was last summer, and I think talking about we we talked before we started about trying, you know, the 80, 20, if somebody can do something 80% as good as you let them do it and free right. you up to do other things. I read the four hour work week last Ooh, year and it really, really changed me. It, that was what really, I think that's what snapped in me to say, if you really want to have, if you really want to find your purpose and you really want to get the shit done, you want to get done. You got to let some stuff go. Yeah. Yeah. That was a really good one. For sure. Um, talking about changing the subject a little bit, go off on a rabbit trail. It. Yeah. My wife and I were talking recently about memories. And I tend to, once it's in the past, it like goes into a locked vault, which is really difficult to access. Mm -hmm. And my wife, she said literally for her, her memories are stored almost on like a memory chip on a carousel. And she can kind of sit there and almost you know, spin the carousel, stop it at a certain point and pick out a memory and in fine detail, remember everything about it. And for me, it's like, it's in a locked vault and I have no access to it. I forgot the key. How's, how's it for you pulling up things in the past? Like, do you, do you... Uh, No, I'm a, okay. I, I believe in not having any regrets. I want to go to the grave without any regrets. I also believe that whatever I've done in the past has brought me to where I am right now. Mm -hmm. I, I probably fault if, if I do have a fault, it's not looking to the past often enough, but I'm wondering, I don't want to sound sexist here, but I'm kind of wondering if it's a male, female thing to an extent, and it may not be, but because memories are important because they shape who you are, where you came from, and in some ways, it's a collectivism thing. You know, your community that you're a part of, you have these collective memories that you can sit down and 
I, I do focus on the positives. You know, we, we sit down, Becky and I, and we talk about uh, some, th- actually today, kind of cool story, we were cleaning up the basement and we found Becky's high school yearbooks and my college yearbooks. And th- this is the power of a story. So the girls are sitting there and we're flipping through and they'll, who's that dad? And who's this? And I would tell them, and I told them about a girl who broke my heart. And that led to Becky and I telling them the story of how we met. And Charlotte just about had tears in her eyes. And that's the power of memories because it's the first time we've probably told them since they were old, since they're old enough to understand or to really feel that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah, memories are, it's a neat thing. And I'm going to go on another rabbit hole tangent here too, but I think that's why nostalgia is so powerful right now. Like you have whole YouTube channels that just specialize in commercials from the eighties and the nineties, because All you have are those fond memories, but you don't remember all the bad shit that happened, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm going to bring this up, and I'm just going to say that this is a lady who put this comment up here, apartment (laughs) prepper. She said, in general, it's in parentheses, or women are more emotional and memories are connected to emotion. I can see that. Yep. And I'm going to bring this one up too. Uh, LG said, most people think that introverts don't like people. He likes people, but he has to recharge his batteries alone. Enjoys interacting and talking with people, but only with a full battery. For sure. Yeah. (laughs) I like Definitely. Yeah, definitely. You can be different people if you have a full versus, you know, empty battery. For sure. Seem like a different person. And that's part of your purpose too, right? You, You said literally you feel your purpose and passion is to help teens and other people find their purpose and passion. So right. if you're not charged up, you probably can't fulfill your passion you or that. purpose. Right. right. Exactly. You, you, if you're not charged up and who, if you're not able to fully utilize, okay, look at it this way. If a flashlight battery goes dim, it, it has access to what? 10% of its power. It doesn't light the way when you're fully charged up, you can fully access all of your gifts, all of your talents, your 100% unique personality. You have full access to that to help other people, to reach out to other people, to, to whatever you, your, path, your chosen path is in life. When you're fully charged, like you're fully lit up and able to access all of the gifts that you've been given. I like That's it. kind of how I look at it. Yeah. You know what? We've been an hour and 15, my friend, and I want (laughs) to, yeah, so where do you, if you had one thing to say, or, you know, if there's other people that just haven't quite heard it yet or haven't quite got it yet, what what do you want to say to them as far as get the hell out there, find your purpose, find your passion? Just try something. Just, just go do the next thing. Go try something. You know, if, if you do it one day and hate it, go try the next thing. Do it for a week. Like, yeah, that's okay, but not really interested. Go try the next thing. There's right now you can find a job doing almost anything you want to do. There's so many people that need help. They, they just want somebody that wants to work that, that doesn't just want the paycheck. You know, everybody's looking for somebody that, that wants to impact other people. So just go try something. I love it. It's as simple as that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it is. Not it ain't easy, but it's simple. Yep. So my friend, where do people find you? Because you're obviously well spoken. You must have some sort of podcast. I, I do have a podcast. Uh the Constructive Liberty Podcast. It's at con- podcast.constructiveliberty.com. So I do a, a weekly podcast, ends up being about 30 minutes. Occasionally I'll have a guest on, which will then I'll have two that week. Um but yeah, talk about building kind of lifestyle design. So how to live a better life, you know, I've not to steal Jack's tagline. Mine is uh, creating, designing a lifestyle of freedom. So nice. that's, that's what I talk about. Are you on the tickety talk and the Facebook and the Instagram? And I am on most of the social medias. Um, how active I am. I'm probably most active on Facebook just because I can throw a post up there pretty quick. Most of the others require a video or a picture or something like that. And I tend to think of something while I'm driving and then post it when I get a chance. And yes, I'm on fountain hunters. Thanks hunter for the reminder. 
appreciate that. <laughs> I do love Fountain. I absolutely love it. But yeah. Yeah. I've, I'm getting into that. It's, it's a good little app. I, I'm enjoying it. But yeah. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can find me on most gonna, of the socials. You can find me. You're going to be at, you want to talk a little more about uh, Self-Reliance Festival, what you're going to be talking about and all that? Yes. So my topic is bridging the personality gap. Oh. And yes. So that it applies to everybody. Everything you do in life has to do with other people or I mean, you can go out and be a hermit and not have anything to do with anybody. But if you want to have any kind of life, you're going to interact with other people almost on a day to day basis. And if you can understand personalities and how to um, not manipulate them, but, you know, how to bring out the best in other people, we'll put it that way, how to interact with them on their level. You have stronger relationships, which affects everything in life from sales to how you how you create a landing page on your website to you know maybe the spouse you choose to helping your kids become who they can be you know fully utilize their personality and their gifts their talents it's going to be a lot of fun so i'm i'm really excited about it i'm looking forward to it we'll get to hang out in person again so that'll be nice yeah. too it's and awesome. what's your website again which one <laughs> any or all of them no uh on on the you know it's either podcast.constructiveliberty.com which is long also empowering forward momentum.com so empowering forward. check either one of those out yes what about Kenneth Kenneth? Com has some some of my personal stuff has my socials and all that attached to it cool well i've got your links in the description so awesome. everybody you know show ken the workshop love and subscribe to his podcast get by there and uh, give him a little boost it'll be great Hey, I appreciate you having me on, Tim. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you, Ken. This was fun like always. I, I appreciate it. And, you know, we, we've chatted a bunch, but I've never had a chance to bring you on here. So thanks, man, for coming on. We'll have you yeah, back again. Okay. Let's do it. Cool. If you want to just hang in the background for a second, I'll close up and I'll be right back Sounds with good. you. All right, guys, that was awesome. What a great interaction. Thank you, LG. I see that. I said thanks, everybody. What great interaction we had from the community tonight. I love it when you guys bring your A game and share. And you can tell Ken is absolutely dead set passionate about finding passion and purpose in life. And he's just an all around great dude too. So we'll have him back. And I really appreciate him coming on here. So guys, thanks for dropping in. I know the weather's still nice out there. And I appreciate that you're willing to come in on a Sunday evening and hang out in the workshop. So guys, as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week. <laughs>